Hello painting thieves and welcome! It's Kathleen from Cause Creations. Welcome to the No Bra Zone, guys. Sorry about the little bit of a weird angle, but I'm trying really hard to not have you see the camera above in the glare of my painting below. I know you can see my hands, but we'll have to deal with that. I need to figure out how to give you the best possible picture when I'm painting on a black canvas because um, the glare is there. Like I see a little line over here. That's actually not there. That's a shadow from something. But uh, hey, if anybody can give me advice on that, I would be eternally grateful to you because uh, I just can't seem to figure it out. And you can see my tummy tum, can't you? <laughs> That's okay. Our base coat is already down on this fellow. It is a black. Um, I get a lot of comments about the amount of paint that I use. And I, I, I feel two ways about that. I, I certainly don't like to waste paint and I do everything I can not to waste paint. When I'm done and the camera is off and I move this canvas to a uh, level space to dry, I scrape up every nook and cranny of paint that is below this and I put it in what I call a slop bucket. I have two slop buckets, one for darker colors and one for not so dark colors. And then what I do is eventually I mix that slop bucket up really well, check the consistency, add usually some GAC 800 to it. And in the dark color, I usually add some bone black and then I strain it and I reuse it. And that's what you see right here. This is paint from my slop bucket that does not get wasted. Guys, I do everything I can to reutilize my paints. If there is a little bit of paint left in a cup, I store it in a covered plastic container. A lot of times I add other paints to it to make different colors. So um, my second option is when I'm doing a painting and maybe I add a second or a third ring pour to that painting because I wasn't happy with the outcome of the first ring pour. I have two options at that point. I either scrape it and reutilize all the paint that I scraped off the canvas or I keep going and I try to make something that makes me smile, guys. So um, as far as me wasting things, I do everything I can not to Pouring medium is expensive, paints are expensive, and canvases are certainly expensive. So there you have it. Let's talk about what we're doing today. Black base coat is down. We're calling it black <laughs> from the slap bucket. Our colors that we're gonna be fiddling with are yummy. They are my jam. I have a wall between two doors, a kind of a narrow, area that I want a piece of art to go vertical on. And that's what I'm going to uh, create here, a piece of art for that spot. So we're using my color jam today, guys. What do we have in this yummy cup? We have yummy goodness. We have golden iridescent copper in the fluids. Our pouring medium today is 50% Floetrol, 50% Golden GAC 800. I did not need to add any water to these paints because um, I'm using all fluid paints. Also, my pouring medium is a little more fluid. Those of you who just use Floetrol, I use Floetrol and GAC 800. GAC 800 is more fluid than Floetrol. Um, this yummy cup right here, we have another fluid paint, golden fluid acrylics, and that is the raw sienna. This beautiful shade right here is golden fluid acrylics and that's in the burnt sienna. This yummy goodness right here is golden fluids and that is their iridescent bronze. And this final cup is golden fluid acrylics in the bone black and this paint and this paint alone is mixed with 
the Aussie Floetrol because I want to get some lacing because this is going to be a very minimalistic swipe and I'd like to add some interest with some lacing. Now, I don't know if you can see this guys, but there's a bit of an oil slick and we have talked about that before and lessons learned. I just finished putting an isolation coat and then my first coat of varnish on a painting where I had used the Aussie Floetrol, which I believe has some type of an oil in it. I've heard it might be linseed oil. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but uh, my resin did not take. Those of you who have ever tried to resin a piece that had silicone in it and then see little pockets of where the resin, resin did not take to the canvas, that happened to a painting um, that I uh, recently tried to varnish. So if you're using the Aussie Flow Troll, from my experience and my experience alone, I feel that you have to wash your canvas down with your baby wipes or your Dawn dish soap or whatever to get rid of any of the oil residue that might be left behind by this Aussie Flow Troll. So, Lessons learned with all of that, guys. I am so happy you're here. I'm excited to be here. It's early in the morning. I got started early because we're supposed to have some beautiful sunshine today. And Rick and I are gonna go for a little motorcycle ride this afternoon. So early start with my painting, guys. Let's put some tunes on. Let's dance around a little bit, have some fun. Let's get busy. So full of self-confidence And everything you said made a lot of sense I thought I was too cold to ever love again But every single word cut through the rain We see the distance grow Every day now I confess 
Grow 